to uh, related to vitiligo at the end. I am a registered dietitian, so I'm a little bit different than a nutritionist. So I would do a lot more clinical things, like uh, dietitians work in a hospital setting most of the time in the UK. Um, but we're more clinically trained than the nutritionists. So that's the basic difference, okay? It's not a big deal. Um, my specialty is actually, uh, I do a lot of weight loss, I do a lot of IBS or GI issues, and I also work with the Vegetarian Society. I'm a freelance dietitian, so I do a lot of different types of nutrition. Okay? Yep. And where do I point this? Um, press the, are you pressing the left and right? Left. Right. Press the right button? Yeah. Okay. So I thought we'd start with a little quiz first. Uh, I'm going to move this in a little bit. So I thought we'd just go through some general, just a little quiz at the beginning, then hopefully you'll listen a little bit more attentively to my presentation, and then I'll tell you the answers at the end. So do you believe that women and men have the same alcohol guidelines in the UK? No. no. Okay. Uh, do you believe that we get over 80% of our vitamin D from the sunshine and not from food? Yeah. 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 Okay. Smoothies can count for all of your five a day. No. Uh, herbal teas can count towards your hydration intake per day. Okay. Sometimes it might be necessary to take a nutritional supplement. Yeah. And everyone should be taking a vitamin D supplement in the UK. Mixed reviews there? Yeah, not yet. Occasionally. So you've got about a little over half right. Couple of them, it's a little bit of confusion there. Okay, so I was just going to talk today about the Eat Well Guide. I don't know if you heard about the Eat Well Plate before. The Eat Well Guide has just been revised this summer, um, just to give us a general idea of what we should be having every day. Then I'm going to go through portion sizes, go through fats, sugar, and salt. For those of you that came up to my table at lunchtime, uh, try to guess how much fat and sugar were in things. That was quite interesting. I did have one lady, Anne, is it? That did really well. She did 100%. She matched them all up. Yes. But not a lot of people read labels and the new labeling guidelines in the UK, so it would be very good to review that. Uh, then alcohol guidelines, food labeling, nutrition, nu nutrients specific to vitiligo. Talk about a few resources and then leave some time at the end for questions. So has anyone seen the new eWell guide? It only came out a few months ago. No. 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 I'm okay. seeing the new one. No. Okay. So basically, the eWell guide is just a practical, basic <coughs> representation of what you should be having every day. It's not what you should be having at every meal. A lot of people get that confused. So if you if you're wondering, is your diet healthy enough? Are you meeting all the guidelines? If you follow the Eat Well Guide with the amount of portions and the servings per food group, you, you should be making all your recommended nutrient intakes. Okay, so it's just a practical recommendation, okay? It's, it's not specific to different diseases or anything, it's just for the general public. So, um, so it came out in March. Time flies, I thought it was a few months ago. Um, it's a visual representation of how the different foods contribute to a healthy diet. It does not apply to children, it's, um, but there's no kids here anyway. And the size of the segments, which is really important, is consistent with the government regulations. It's based on five food groups, and now I'm going to go through each of the different segments. So if you're wondering how much fruits and vegetables you should have every day, it's related to the amount of the guide. Okay, so that the green group is 40% of your diet. So that's quite high, isn't it? Mm, very high. So on a day-to-day -day basis, um, your fruits and veg should be almost half of what you're having. And that's really important because I'm going to talk about antioxidants, vitamin A, things that are related to skin pigmentation. And this is where you get most of that from. It's the fruits and the vegetables. It's the dark, the dark fruits, the dark vegetables. I'm sure you've heard of the five a day in the UK. Yes. Really, we should be having more than five a day. The five a day is there because most 
UK residents don't have five a day. It's about two and a half, the average. I'm from Canada, if you're wondering where my accent is from. Our recommendation is eight to ten a day. Wow. Yeah. I thought Australia was higher. I think that's seven. A lot of countries are really, are much higher than five a day. But public health in the UK is a little bit conservative, and they want it to be practical. So if your average person is only having two and a half, five may be practical that you could have five or fruit, five fruits and veg. Okay. Forty percent of your diet. They contain vitamins and minerals, uh, uh, fiber is really important. So one portion is 80 grams of fruit. So 80 grams, that's like a medium-sized banana, a large apple, okay? They can be fresh, frozen, tinned, or dried. So if it's dried fruit, it's only 30 grams. So back to the smoothie question, what did you say about the smoothies? I don't think, I don't think so. So once, you can count one smoothie towards your five a day. Okay? Like the latest trend now is a Nutribullet. A lot of my clients say, oh, Susan, I'm going to come healthy now. I bought the Nutribullet. But you don't want to overdo the Nutribullet. You don't want to have too much fruits and veg in there without any protein because it can be high in sugar. And then there's no fiber. It's much better to have the fruit. So the guidelines is you can have a smoothie, but it's only one. Okay? Okay? So the, next, the yellow group is the potatoes, bread, rice, pasta, and other starchy carbohydrates. And that's 38% of your diet. So it's the next largest portion of what you should be having every day. I think we did that at lunch. There were sandwiches, there was wraps, there was a nice uh, salad there. So I think we got our 38% at lunch. <laughs> okay, so you want to choose, um, in that group, you want to have whole wheat items. You want a whole wheat pasta, whole wheat bread, you know, stay away from the white, white flour is not as nutritious, as low in fiber. Okay, so that group gives us fiber, calcium, iron, and B vitamins. Okay. Dairy. Dairy is an interesting one. It's the blue group. It should be 8% of our diet. Okay, so basically we should be having two or three servings a day, and we really should be having them low fat. Okay, if you're dairy free, like some of us, um, you really wanna have four to five products. So if you're not having cow or animal dairy, you can have soya, soya milk, almond milk, hemp milk, just loads of different kinds, just make sure it's fortified, okay? The next group um, is where we get our proteins, so it's meat, fish, eggs, beans, pulses. And that's only 12% of our diet. So just think of what you ate yesterday. Do you think this group was only 12%? Or did you, on your plate, was, was it like a huge steak? So it's only 12%, so it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a big quantity. So as I said, I do work for the Vegetarian Society as well. We don't all have to be vegetarians, but I highly recommend you having beans or pulses, vegetarian foods a couple days a week. It's low in fat, high in antioxidants, high in uh, fiber as well. So that's just a practical tip that I, I'd recommend to everybody. So two portions of protein a day, uh, three if you're vegetarian because it's absorbed a little bit differently. And the new recommendation is two portions of fish a week. They really should be fatty fish, oily fish, like mackerel, salmon, and that's to get our vitamin D. Okay. So oils and spreads, so things like margarine, butter, we had mayonnaise or something in those sandwiches for lunch. It should only be 1% of our diet, but I'm going to go through fats a little bit later and tell you about healthy fats. Okay? So it's only a small amount in our diet. The healthier fats are vegetable oils, rapeseed oil, olive oil, things like that. Okay? The other little group that used to be in the, in the eat well plate but's no longer there is the foods that should be eaten less often and in small amounts. 
Today would be things like I had on the table, um, you know, chocolate bars, uh, things that are high in fat. I had Coke on the table if you came by. You, you see the foods that we just want to have less frequently. Okay. The next, the next thing I was going to talk about is hydration. So hydration is really important for all of us. Uh, we should have six to eight glasses of fluid a day. Water, low-fat milk, sugar-free drinks, including tea and coffee, fruit juices and smoothies, that's maximum 150 per day. So you're right about that question that herbal teas do account uh, part of your hydration. Okay? <coughs> but I think another lady spoke about stress, so really we want to try to have decaffeinated products. Herbal teas, things that are naturally decaffeinated. Naturally decaf. I did pass out a handout and a little card on the top left-hand corner about food labeling. This, there's new food labeling guidelines in the UK, came from the EU, I think it was last year. Um, and it talks about a gen an easy way. So you can take that card with you, take it to the supermarket. You really should be looking at your labels when you're in the shop. You don't realize how much fat and sugar are in products. So things that are in the red are too high in fat, saturated fat, sugars, and salt. Has anyone seen this when they're in the supermarket shopping? Yes. Yeah? Has it helped? Yes. It's hard to find products in the green group, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. yeah it is. So the green group are low in fat, low in saturated fat, low in sugar, and low in salt. So you really want to start using uh, that little card that I gave you. Okay. So really you want a variety of foods in each group. Consider a diet balanced over the week rather than at each meal. And include everything away from home. In the UK, I can't remember the statistic, but this enormous amount of food that's eaten, eaten takeaways, uh, so that would be included as well. So just generally, base your meals on the starchy foods, you know, those two biggest food groups, the fruit and veg and the starch group. Eat lots of fruit and veg. Eat more fish, uh, oily fish, one, once or twice a week. Cut down on saturated fat and sugars. Eat less salt. We shouldn't have any more than 6 grams of salt a day or 2,400 milligrams of sodium. Okay, you see the sodium on packages? Our daily intake shouldn't be any more than 2,400. It's quite difficult to do that if you're having processed foods. Oops, sorry. Um, get active, keep a healthy weight. Don't get thirsty. If you're thirsty, that means you're already dehydrated. Does everyone know about the pee test to know if they're hydrated or not? No. Some offices now have, have the sign in, in, in the loose and tell them if you're dehydrated or not. So if your pee is bright yellow, that means you're dehydrated. If it's clear, that means you're overhydrated. So you want to have it like straw color. Okay? And don't skip breakfast. I was talking to um, this, couple, this nice couple at lunchtime and they just I just asked him what he ate yesterday, and he talked that he always had cereal for breakfast and milk. The thing that's missing in that breakfast is protein. I'm a big advocate of having protein at every meal. It keeps you full throughout the day, reduces your sugar intake. Okay, so you really want to have protein at every meal, especially breakfast, like eggs, peanut butter, yogurt. Okay. Fats. So we do need some fat in all of our diets. You know, people say, oh, let's just cut out fat. You don't want to cut out all the fat. You do have to have good fats, because they help with the absorption of A, D, E, and K. It keeps our, our healthy. It's good for our skin. It's good for health. OK? The bad fats, fats reduce, increase your cholesterol. Okay, so unsaturated fats, everyone heard about unsaturated fats. They're the healthier ones. They would be in things like seeds, nuts, and vegetables, like avocado, things like that. Okay, the omega-3 is mostly found in oily fish. That's why I recommended that you have oily fish as well. Sardines, salmon, mackerel, and then plant foods such as rapeseed, walnuts, for a good source, soya flax, linseed oil, things like that. And then olive oil and rapeseed oil uh, are a really good source of mono. So they're, they're the, um, 
they're the good fats. Unhealthy ones are the saturated fats, so it's butter, animal fat, and coconut and palm oil. I have some, still have some cards out on my table that tells you how much saturated fats is in some of these fats. So the latest thing, you know, is have coconut oil is absorbed well. It is absorbed really well, but it has some bad fats in it because it's high in saturated fats. Okay. And then trans fats, it's hydrogenated vegetable oils, and they're in a lot of processed foods. So they turn to cholesterol in our body and increases your cholesterol. So has everyone seen the new sugar recommendations that came out just a few months ago for public health? No? No. Our sugar should only be 5% of our daily intake. Okay, so 5% is not very much, it's 30 grams. Okay, do you know what 30 grams equate to? I have a little bottle of it outside. It's, it's uh, seven sugar, sugar cubes. So I know these things are popular in the UK. It's one of my favorite things since moving here. Digestive cookies, I heard, I heard you had them for your snack this morning. <laughs> Um, so, if you have the whole package now, and like, no one's going to probably sit down and eat the whole package, but this would be how much sugar it's in it. So it's 97.9 grams, so it's three times your daily intake. So my suggestion is share the package. <laughs> okay? The confusion around sugar is that it's, the 30 grams is intrinsic sugars. So it doesn't mean the sugar that's in milk or in fruits and vegetables. Okay, it's added sugar, it's simple sugars. So a lot of my clients say, well, Susan, I have honey or I have agave uh, syrup. It's still sugar. It's still included in the 30 grams. Okay? But fruits and veg and the milk products is not the same type of sugar. Well, I got ahead of myself. So there it just explains the difference. Uh, intrinsic and free sugars. Okay, so the juice that you have for lunch, I'd recommend just having a little glass because that has sugar in it as well. Okay. So sugar can be bad for you, but we just want to make sure we have the right types of carbohydrates. So your sugar that's in your fruits and in your milk is okay, but we want to do stay away from the added sugars. Okay. So if you're looking at the label in the supermarket, make sure sugar is not one of the top three ingredients. Okay. If you see here, um, you, ha you have it in your handout, how much sugar that we have in the UK right now, uh, those two years, and that's why the new recommendations came in. So back in 2011, it was uh, between, it was 11% of total energy. So that's why the recommendation came out to 5%. So the big controversy about that is that how are UK residents gonna have their sugar intake? So that's why um, it was a bit delayed in the 5%. Because most people do double that. Okay, salt, as I mentioned, is 2,400 milligrams or 6 grams a day is what we should be having. Okay, and people say to me, oh, but Susan, I don't uh, add sugar, to, uh, salt to things. It's in a lot of processed foods. Okay. So it is related to a lot of um, problems in our health and how we can reduce it, eating out, you know, make sure you don't add salt to your food when you're eating out, shopping, read the labels. If there's anything with sodium, it's high in salt. When I do my meal plans for clients, I find if they have like one processed food a day, everything else has to be natural to, to get it under the guidelines. Alcohol, I think everyone got this one wrong, I believe. Was there anyone that said it was the same? So the new guidelines for alcohol in the UK, same for men and women. Um, so we're not, the guidelines are supposed to be less than 14 units a week. Now 14 units a week, you may think that's a lot, but really it's not. That's what it looks like there. 
So that there's your beer on top, and then your wine, and then your spirits. Okay? That doesn't mean you can't drink all the week, during the week, and then on the weekends. You know, add it up, and you have 14 in two days. It's all about moderation. So, you know, when I see weight loss clients, and I find they, they, they're drinking too much, that's what's causing their weight gain. It's all moderation. You know, just, just have so many free alcohol days. And it really depends on what you're doing now. The problem with alcohol for weight gain is that it's 8 calories a gram. It's almost as bad as fat. Fat is 9 calories a gram. So that's why it can be easy to put on weight. I'm really surprised when I moved here. The pub culture is so, so popular. In Canada, everyone goes for coffee. It's important, which is terribly bad coffee. But here in the UK, everyone just goes for a drink at the local pub. <laughs> But that's the guidelines, 14 a week. Okay? Everyone's surprised it's the same for men and women now? So what they say is that you try to spread it evenly throughout the week for your health. Okay, so that's one unit there. Um, so a, a standard wine, it's only 75 mils, so that's quite a small glass of wine, isn't it? Vitamin D, I really wanted to express about vitamin D. I did, I did do some research about vitiligo before I came today. Um, and there's a new recommendation in the, in the UK that between October and May that we do take a vitamin D supplement. So I really cannot um, press upon you how important it is. I know a lot of you um, probably stay away from the sun or put too much SPF on. You're not getting your vitamin D when you go out in the sun. Or if you have a darker skin tone, you're not going to get as much vitamin D. We can't. We, we get most of it from the sunshine. So if you're if you're not ex exposing your skin to sun, you really should be taking a supplement. And we don't get enough sunshine between the months of October to May. Anyone have any questions about vitamin D? I just really wanted to express that it is the new guideline that everyone takes it in their autumn, autumn and winter. And it's 10 micrograms. I have one question. Yeah. Um, I took vitamin D yeah. um, as a supplement for about two, two and a half years. And yeah. I, I went to have some treatment with Professor Charwriter, and she took, she takes both tests, and my vitamin D was really high. Oh. Um, and you know, she sent me for a you know, quick check out because it can be quite dangerous, I yep. was told. So, you know, what is your. Thing on that in Japan and everyone's but in my case I read all the research that people with Tiligo some of us have got low vitamin D but you're right it's because we don't go in the sun. But in my case I've always gone in the sun. So I shouldn't have been taking the supplement and I kind of I was lucky, I had quite overdosed, but I was if I'd carried on doing what I was doing I'd probably be in trouble now. Yes, so for you obviously it wasn't yeah. the right recommendation. The recommendation is for the general population. You know, obviously you must have something metabolically in your body that you're you're absorbing more than the average person or something. You know, I was, I was getting some ice and I was taking supplements. Yeah. But I didn't need No, you may have been taking too much or something. I don't know. Your, your individual case that I've never heard of anyone, you know, having too much. So taking but vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. Every day for two years. Yeah. Oh well, I think. I, so yeah, that you're saying that. But your skin must be metabolizing it differently than the average person. You know, this is a general recommendation. So for you, obviously, it's not. A, you know, we're all individuals. I'm telling you what. It is dangerous to take yeah. too much. Yeah. yeah. So the recommendation is 10 micrograms. So you want to be careful about things that you read, like vitamin A, D, E, and K are fat soluble, so those toxic levels. Okay, so you don't want to overdose on any type of fat-soluble vitamin. Okay, so vitamin C, you know, if you take 2,000 milligrams, you know, just because you're not feeling well, it's way over what you should be having, but there's no, you're just going to pee it out. It's no big deal. It's water-soluble. Okay? Can I, can I just get clarification? When you say get vitamin D, uh, and particularly because of the way I've this weather cycles in this country get yeah. it between October and no, March. May. October to May. 
Okay. So, so now I'm trying to understand. When you say get vitamin D, you get that by walking around in the sun or sitting down in the sun? You get it by having skin exposed to the sunshine. Yeah. Is that but walking? You're walking, lying in the sun, walking around, or just doing some gardening. And there's not an exact time in the UK that the recommended recommended time. It says half the amount of time before you burn. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? I don't know. We all burn differently. Sure. But if you go out with 50 SPF on, you're not going to absorb much vitamin D. Is that the fact that you're talking? Yeah, SPF, sun protection factor. So we're putting on a lot of uh, skin lotion, sun, suntan lotion. You're not going to absorb it. But between October and May, we're not getting the right rays to, to get it anyway. So that's why they say we should be taking a, a supplement. Okay? Sorry, one question. Sorry if I missed this. Is it dangerous to take vitamin D then um, from June to... No, but you should be getting it through. It's not as necessary. Okay. So in the summer, if you're going out in the sunshine for half the amount of time before you burn, you should get enough vitamin D. Right. But if you're not doing that, you can take it all year long. It doesn't matter if you take it in those months. Unless it's for this lady that she has some well, sort of... I did want to kill you in the holidays, because I didn't know what yeah. you were saying. I didn't know. But is there okay. a measurement? Is it, can we have a blood test and have what's yeah. normal? What, what is it? I don't know that you'll have to email me on that one. Right, okay. But I have some clients that come to me and they have low energy. And then, you know, I tell them, well, let's fix your diet first. Or why don't you get some things tested? So you probably want your iron tested, your vitamin D tested. And if, you're, if you have some of the symptoms, then you can um, get a blood test like you did to see if it was, if you are deficient. So that's all I was going to talk about general nutrition, and then I was going to go through a little bit about the nutrients related to skin pigmentation. Okay. Um, so vitamin B12, I'm sure you've a lot of heard of B12, it mostly comes from animal products. So that is something that you really want to make sure that you're getting enough of. Okay. If you're not having animal products, you can get B12 from other sources such as uh, yeast extract, uh, seaweed, um, or can even have a full list of non-animal products that are B12, okay? If you have a really restrictive diet like a vegan, you probably want to be on a supplement for B12. So there's the answer to another one of your questions. Sometimes it is necessary to take a supplement. Folic acid, we find that that's another B vitamin, it's yeast extracts, green vegetables and beans. So it goes back to that practical tip I told you about, we should be having beans twice a week, your vegetables all dark green, bright orange, okay? Vitamin C is in our citrus fruits, so oranges, grapefruits, lemons, limes, all those wonderful things, okay? Vitamin D, I've talked about oily fish and dairy, so these nutrients you really wanna make sure you're getting enough in your diet. And your, your beta carotene, that's the antioxidant, um, intense yellow, orange, and green fruits and vegetables. Okay? Do you want to make sure you're having those in your diet every day? Other minerals I just wanted to talk about related to vitiligo is copper, iron, and zinc. You want to make sure you're getting those in your diet as well. So copper, it's all the same foods, that, don't you find nuts, beans, nuts and seeds, all those healthy things we should be having every day. Okay, well, iron is mostly found in animal products, but it's also found in beans and dried fruit. If you're having beans and dried fruit as your iron, you want to have your vitamin C source along with it because that absorbs the, that type of iron. Okay, zinc. Zinc can be low in a lot of us. It comes from meats, nuts, seeds, and beans. So a lot of the same foods. I'm a dietitian, so I can really only talk about things that are medically proven to be effective. Um, so I haven't found any evidence of a dietary link. So of course, there's no official recommendation. So I'd apologize for that. But as, as nutrition is a science, so you never know what could come up. 
But I guess my main thing about today is just to make sure you're having a healthy diet. If you're not having some of these foods in your diet, then probably take a supplement. Okay. That might be quite small. Um, so there is, you know, it's, it's, there is some research out there around vitamins, minerals, and vitiligo, but not, you know, there's still a lot of clinical trials. There's no sort of, you know, random controlled stu study yet to prove that there's anything that's going to cure it. Okay. You guys are probably more up on the research around the disease. I'm just an expert on nutrition. Okay. So just just want to you know if you see some see you know like this one trial I just talked about here, ten ten patients had this. It worked for some of them. Didn't work for for everybody. But it's one study. For for us to come up with a general recommendation, it has to have a number of studies proving effective before we can say have this or have that nutrient. So back to the quiz. Women and men have the same alcohol guidelines. Yes, true. We get over eighty percent of our vitamin D from the sun and um, not food. True. Smoothies one a day at one hundred and fifty mils. Okay. Herbal teas can count for your hydration. Yes. Sometimes you may need a nutritional supplement, and everyone in the UK is a general recommendation we should be taking our supplement out. It's just October, so we should be taking it. Or I'll go away for a nice sun holiday on a sunny beach. So basically, for help for us to be healthy, stay active, follow all the guidelines I talked about today for water, fats, fiber, salt, sugar, and alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Fermented foods always seem to be. Like what? What foods? Sorry. Fermented. Fermented foods. Yeah. Because the guidelines are really just for the general population. You know, it's These guidelines are quite conservative as well. So you may you may see that in another 10, 20 years. Yeah. And another thing is they always say low fat milk. And low fat milk, our same skin or completely skin, is the high processed milk. And uh, people who work in the milk industry, they never feed their children a low fat or skin milk because of the the way it's uh, processed. So it's better to have a full fat milk diluted uh, in water than it really it really depends on so all children under the age of two are not allowed to have semi skin milk anyway it's whole milk until you're the age of two but the, the general guy the problem is in the UK a lot of Western countries is a high rate of obesity so it's about the total fat in your diet so if you're having a low fat diet less than 30 percent of your calories is fat it's okay to have a whole milk you know these are general guidelines you know so for individuals it may be different Okay. A couple of things, I, um, a lot of you I'm sure know a lot about what I talked about today and a lot of my clients know a lot about nutrition. It's about staying on track. It's about practical, just some practical ideas on how we can be healthy. A couple of resources I use, I love the new technology. If you want to find out if your diet is healthy or not, there's lots of online programs. I use my fitness pal, I, have, I follow clients online. You put in all your food, it'll tell you how much calcium, vitamin D, iron, calories, it tells you all those things. Okay, so if you just want to do your own little analysis of your diet. Um, for activity, I use any type, I recommend to my client any on, on my app or I have an iWatch that keeps me active, a Fitbit, anything that motivates you to you know, do more steps. The recommendation is 10,000 steps in this country, so we should be, you know, taking the, the stairs more often, getting the getting off the bus a little bit earlier, to try to make our 10,000 steps. And there's even lots of hydration apps. 
if you want your phone to ping when you need another glass of water. So there's lots of help out there. Okay, if, if you have any really s specific questions or anything you, I can't answer today, you can always email me and I'll get back to you. Okay, I hope you found that somewhat informative. <laughs> any other questions, anything you want to ask me? Very, very controversial question. The problem with gluten is that a lot of our foods have five times more gluten than it had like 50 years ago. So we're finding more and more issues um, with, with gluten. Gluten, if you go on a gluten-free diet, it's not going to fix everything. Like it's not the latest. You know, a lot of the media says, oh, everyone should be gluten-free. I don't agree with that. But there's a, there is some research around gluten-free and autoimmune disease. I see a lot of people come in with, for me for IBS or bloating, and gluten-free helps them. So I can't give you an exact answer, but if, if you feel you have symptoms, if you want to try it for a while, you know, I, I would. But you want to make sure you do it healthy. Okay, for the general person, a lot of people have too much gluten now. And if our products have five times, well then that's why we're probably having more issues. Does that sort of answer your question? If you want to find out if, if gluten is a problem for you, what I probably do is do a food symptom diary to see if any of your symptoms can be related to food. And then take out the gluten in your diet replace with healthy alternatives, and see if your symptoms go away. I, I do see people with, a, how do you say in the UK, a eczema, and if they go dairy-free and gluten-free, they, they, a lot of their skin problems do go away. But I'm not saying gluten is gonna fix your problem. Okay. Would you agree that when people try to get out of my diet, and in doing that, the temptation is to buy all the gluten-free projects, which are highly processed and worse for you? Yes, so do it in the yeah. proper way. Yeah. So you can do healthy alternatives like rice. If you want pasta, have rice pasta, have rice flour. But I wouldn't be spending a lot of money on all these processed foods. Because you're right, they're yeah. highly processed, a lot of chemicals. But, you know, have more fruits and veg, have more beans, peas, lentils, things like that. Because most of us uh, eat too much gluten. Any questions? I'll hang around for a while after outside if anyone wants to come up and talk to me individually.